In this video, I made Mesa one of the most versatile DPSs in the game. I gave her better survivability, better damage scaling, and made her even more fun to play. More focused on her abilities and using her weapons as utilities to buff her damage output. What's good folks, this is Nightmare Frame here with a new Warframe video coming at you with the Mesa that you need in your arsenal right now. She is using the Helmet ability Zanta's Whisper. I did replace her one. I know that her one was changed, but the first ability is more of a one-shot deal. Build stacks, use it. It requires a lot of casting, while this buff remains for a long duration and scales better. Because not only does it scale off power strength, it procs an additional status effect, redirects projectiles, scales off your modded weapons, faction damage, and other sources of damage multipliers. And trust me, I've done several videos explaining this ability and how deadly it is. Mesa did have a lot of problems with her Peacemaker scaling to higher levels. Because for one, it is an exalted weapon and it restricts you from using a particular loadout. And yes, her main damaging ability is going to be Peacemaker. Peacemaker scales from power strength and the mods you equip on the exalted weapon itself. It is a secondary, so it has the option of equipping unique multi-shot mods. As you can see, I have three weapons and all the three weapons that I'm using here are not even going to be damaging the enemies. They're just here for utility. The Aphantis has a unique perk. When you alternate fire and go into the bubble, you get the Belastari Might. When you kill enemies while in this bubble, you get several buffs, and one of them being fire rate. It is 20% fire rate, but that fire rate is going to be very useful for Mesa. So your main goal is to cast this alternate fire bubble, make sure you're in it, kill enemies while you're in it, and you get this buff. As long as you're inside the bubble, it is permanent. Once you step out, the timer begins to count down. So you have 40 seconds each time. Throw it down, kill one enemy, and you can move around. And just refresh it every 40 seconds. The static core here is used as an AoE primer. Now you may be wondering, why not use the Epitaph? The Epitaph does have a problem with this particular build because we gain too much fire rate. Epitaph has the two firing modes, your quick tap and the hold. So if you have too much fire rate, you will always be forced into the hold mode, which is a single target version of the Epitaph and is more focused towards damage rather than proccing multiple status effects within an area. So a good alternative was the Static Core. We don't have to use the Static Core priming all the time. It is just there to proc our status effects on a priority target, like an Eximus. Not only that, we're also going to be using our Panzer Vopophila for some additional viral procs. And finally, the Furax Wraith using the Amalgam Furax body count for that additional fire rate. And of course, my Mesa will have Arcane Velocity. Now, you may be wondering, oh, so does that mean we still have to run Anemic Agility on our regulators? Absolutely not. That gives us an additional free slot to apply even more multipliers to it. Now, let's take a look at the Mesa build. As you notice, I do have these Archon Shards. Do you need these Archon Shards? No, this is just for that additional min-maxing. I do have three blues and two Two reds. The two reds are all power strength increase while the blues give me the energy maximum. So 150 on energy and 20% on power strength. In the aura, I have holster amp. This gives me 60% base damage when I swap to any of my weapons. And this would be very nice when you throw down your Fantas, swap and go into your four, you will get this buff. For example, toss. There you go you have that buff right there. It's going to look similar to Vigorous Swap because it pretty much does the same thing as Vigorous Swap. Range at 175%. This is for our shooting gallery. It will help us crowd control enemies. And when you kill six enemies, that is going to proc Muzzle Flash, which is an AOE blind, giving us additional survivability. And not only does shooting gallery give you survivability, but it gives you that little bit of base damage. And on top of that, we do have Shatter Shield. Shatter Shield isn't your general damage reduction. It gives you damage reduction towards projectiles, meaning bullets. So melees, any splash damage, heat procs, they will still hurt you. So don't think this is your end-all be-all survivability tool. No, we're gonna get 
even more. And guess what? Zatis Whisper is also another survivability tool because it will give you that bubble. That bubble is a bullet attractor. Shots from you and other enemies, even allies, will bring in bullets straight to the enemies. Duration at 155% with just Prime Continuity. Power Strength 144% with Umbral Intensify and the 20% from the two Archon Shards. Streamline is going to be our efficiency mod. This is all you need because you're going to have a lot of energy income. And finally, Rolling Guard for that damage and vulnerability for 3 seconds and cleansing your status effects because you're going to get a lot of status effects whether you like it or not. This is going to be a great survivability tool. Prime Sure Footed for that 100% knockdown and stagger resistance. Trust me, spending less time on your butt is a huge DPS increase. Even if you think, hey, I'm going to be on my 4, once you deactivate your 4, you're still vulnerable. Eximus Pulse Waves can knock you down. Random pulls from Scorpions can still get you. So don't think you're safe. If you do not have this, I recommend running Handspring. Energize is going to be for that energy region when picking up energy orbs. And finally, Arcane Velocity for that increase fire rate on secondaries when we crit. And we're going to be critting quite a lot. For the Regulators build, I do have Expel Grenier. This is going to be our damage multiplier. Think of this as a roar on your weapons for that particular faction. Now, if you're fighting any other faction, you will switch this out. This is the Corrosive build with Convulsion and Pathogen Rounds. If you're fighting Corpus, you just run Pathogen Rounds or another Toxin mod, or for even more DPS, you can slot Anemic Agility up to you or give yourself a bit more crit damage with Hollow Point. Galvanized Diffusion and Lethal Torrent are going to be our multi-shot and Lethal Torrent gives you additional 60% fire rate, crit chance, crit damage, and our base damage mod is going to be from Galvanized Shots. Three stacks, you're already getting a lot more base damage than Hornet Strike. And another thing, Zon Zata's bubble is a status effect, and your pet will be proccing viral. So there's going to be a lot of procs everywhere. For our utility weapons, the Aphantis, its throw is determined by how much fire rate you have, so stack a lot of fire rate. Amalgamceration for that sprint speed, very useful. Tactical reload, when you holster it, it'll reload for you, and for why not, with additional reload. Firestorm for the big explosion AoE. And finally, Staticore. Staticore has base radiation, so you're getting three status effects. That radiation proc is really good to confuse the enemies, so they'll shoot less at you. I do have Barrel Diffusion for the animation increase when you roll, Lethal Torrent for even more multi-shot, Fulmination for the AoE radius, Anemic Agility, and Gunslinger for even more fire rate because the charge is determined by your fire rate. Lethal Momentum for that projectile flight speed. It is a medium travel speed projectile, so this is very useful. I'm right pathogen rounds here instead of the 6060 because I want a little bit more viral damage. So viral and heat. And the Furex Wraith, you just need the Amalgam Furex body count. Everything else here is just for added utility. More attack speed and of course dispatch overdrive for even more movement speed. The focus school can be whatever you want. If you want a bit more damage, you can go with Matterite to give you that increase in power strength. If you want a bit more efficiency, you can run Xeneric. But I suggest don't run a efficiency because it does have that node where it allows you to not consume energy. So that means you won't be getting shields back, especially if you're running the Augur's mod. That is going to be our only source of shield regen. Our Panzer Popopila is always very simple and it's the same build. The mutagens, again, do not matter, but you do want to have the two synth mods because this will also help your static core reload while holstered as well. We're going to get a lot of passive reloads. These three right here, very useful if you're running Equilibrium. Panzer Devolution allows Allows your panzer to not fully die and this is pretty much the build all right folks that has been it from this mesa build video this is the mesa build i've been using for quite a bit right now and i've been enjoying it because it's just so fun and easy to use for someone who likes a bit more technicality to their loadouts and if you didn't get it it completely shreds steel path if you've learned something and enjoyed this video, please feel free to leave a like, share, and subscribe for more Warframe content, streams, and so much more. Do refer to the description. Thanks for watching, and as always, peace.